Today we're taking a look at China's latest aircraft carrier, their third one in fact in the most advanced which just hit a milestone when it comes to sea trials. Now this is the Fujin Type 003 which was launched in June of 2022 serving the People's Liberation Army Navy. It's a first non-US carrier equipped with electromagnetic catapults EMALs for aircraft launches. Now sea trials began in May of 2024 and they've had at least nine of them over the last few months. And most recently on September 22nd, Chinese media has released some significant information when it comes to the sea trials of the Fujin, hitting numerous milestones with EMALs. This included the launch and recovery of J-15s, KJ-600, as well as the J-35, and being able to claim they've achieved initial full deck operational capability. The size of the ship, it deploys about 85,000 tons. It's conventionally powered, non-nuclear, can carry up to 50 plus aircraft. And with the EMALs, this enables a higher sortie rate compared to China's earlier ski jump carriers. Given how fast China is moving, it's expected that this is soon to be commissioned as possibly as early as 2026, which would enhance China's naval power and projection throughout the South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait. And that being said, let's take a look at some videos that have popped up. Now, this video is from China's global television network, Europe. They have multiple outlets across, but this is showcasing just, again, some of their accomplishments here, a J-35 being pushed back and brought up to the flight deck. Obviously a maintainer sitting in the cockpit there and then taxiing out. Interesting there, um, you see a HUD different than the F-35, F-35, no HUD that's built into the helmet. Uh, again, maybe this is a test, maybe future ones won't have it, maybe it will have it, just like the Raptor has a HUD being a fifth generation platform. Interesting enough, and I think impressive, you know, the J-35 was announced last November or unveiled officially last November. And so you can see how rapidly they're advancing this program. I will always highlight the canopy bow. You know, again, maybe that is a lack of technological capability to produce a seamless canopy. Maybe they just don't think they need it. But again, uh, above the pilot here, you can see the debt cord. So in this case, he's going to fracture and they're going to ride up the rails and go through it. Unlike an F-22 or F-16 or F-15, where the entire canopy is going to jettison go away. You'll see this in the F-35, in the J-35, as well as the J-20. Clean flight deck, obviously it's testing, so there's no other aircraft on the flight deck, which I guess doesn't surprise me too much. Again, this is supposed to be able to carry 50 plus aircraft on the Fujin. Now we'll give them, you know, two engines. You know, I come from a single engine fighter background. I think a lot of my Navy buddies who flew the Hornet and then the F-35, it would be nice to have two engines when you're talking about naval blue water operations and you only got one piece of good concrete. And I use that term loosely, but uh, nonetheless, twin engine, fifth generation fighter here. They also have the J-15, which kind of looks like a flanker. And in fact, the Russians stopped selling aircraft to the Chinese after they made the J-15 because again, they might or not have stolen some of that technology. Big aircraft. Then unknown if this is at the same time. I mean, I, I would imagine it's all associated with this. Not all these aircraft are recovering. They basically just have their, um, actually, I think I've seen this footage before. But you know you wouldn't have all these aircraft recovering. They're doing tests, so basically one uh, launch and recovery at a time as they certify the Fujin uh, for aircraft operations. So clearly impressive. They're making a lot of strides when it comes to modernizing their Navy, modernizing their aircraft, being able to have that power projection capability, the ability to sail aircraft around the world, project power is not a thing to be taken lightly. And it's a capability that obviously many nations have and obviously want to have there. They kicked it off to the beginning of this video. We started the J-35, because why not? But they're KJ-600, which is their version of the E-2. So that airborne early warning control. So it's got the, the radar dome. It kind of looks like an E-2, if you ask my opinion. Every time I say that, you know, again, people chime up, but I mean, let's take a look at the KJ-600 and an E-2. I'll let you decide. Let me know if you think the same. Where do they get that technology? But when you're coupling these aircraft together, you now have the ability to go out there and own or at least make the airspace contested and power project in and around the region of the aircraft carrier. So this is a big deal when it comes to capability. It's also a big deal 
I think when you just look at how far and how fast uh, they have come in the last few years. Everyone's favorite, landing on the boat, I'm sure. There we go. This is significant. I mean, they now have tested and operated three different types off this aircraft carrier, and they've done this in a relatively short time span. The J-35, again, I think it's a pretty good looking jet. You know, I say it looks like an F-35 and that will get people fired up and engaged with the comments, which is always good. The Chinese did steal a bunch of F-35 technology. I'm just saying, but nonetheless, it is a good looking jet and it is impressive how fast the Chinese been able to produce this and then essentially make it operational or close to operational. So it is happening fast and this is no small feat when it comes to technological advancements to capability advancements that we're watching the, the PLA, the PLA Navy, the PLA Air Force go through and be able to make happen in a short time span. So let me know what you think down below. I'll see you next time.